Final question. Um, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, the goal is to, so the idea behind the retrofit BMP is to have some type of structural best management practice to address both quality and quantity. Okay, so explain the rain barrier. Could so, I just, you know what, um, just to address, this is supposed to be done, I believe, in the MS4 identified area. Correct. Well, okay. Okay. So, not just random. No, it's not right. random. So, okay. and, and what it was was, it's an MS4 area, which is the western part of the town, and usually a government-owned area. Yes. And the municipal owned. And that's so why that's I, I, I hope that clarifies. And we're only really looking at like two buildings. Well, that's why when we met right. with, when the committee met with Tom in May. Um, the idea of the senior center, because it's going to be probably in uh, year five or probably year six by the time it gets implemented, that there was an opportunity for coordination um, with the MS4 program and the senior center to, you know, have a stormwater improvement project like a rain garden or whatever, which would fulfill the requirements of uh, having a demonstration. That's why we were looking at the senior center. Um, uh, something outside the MS4 area probably wouldn't qualify for presentation to, to the, uh, the feds. And I think the other piece we were looking at too is cost wise. This is supposed to show something that a resident or another business could do on their property. So we could have gone to the high extreme and ran all the stormwater drains into a filtering system and done that and spent millions of dollars or you could have done a rain garden which a homeowner could do with their regular one so a rain so garden is that as simple as putting like a 55 gallon drum of a downspout plucking the water and then dispersing it into a, a garden or is it yeah, something that you had a picture of one yes. a little while back there so what you're talking about is more like a dry well or you know yeah. rain rain barrels you're still collecting the you runoff can, then. you can catch it um a rain garden is more, uh, you know, it, an area, I'll say it, yeah, kind of like here in front of this house, a depressed area where stormwater is directed to, which is planted. So the stormwater can, can pull and infiltrate, and the plants can help with some of the um, community housing. A lot of particular foods that have to go in there to be able to. Would that affect mosquito growth, anything like that? If you're retaining water within that area? Maybe, but I mean, it's not like it's a ponded area per se. It's a better thing called scraping area. Yeah. Right. It has to be designed to make sure that it drains adequately and cool. still maintain. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to sidetrack. I just no, but that's you know, very helpful. It's okay. But but that's a good point because when we initially looked at potential sites, it's the senior center or the old. Um, or the police station also. Police station for emergency support. Or, you know, if there's roadway improvements being made, there might be some opportunities there. But, you know, the, the senior center seems like a good. Sure, yeah. Yes. 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 Karen, what about the housing authority, that quasi, you know, it's sort of municipal, but sort of federal, and how about that? It's in the area. Right. Certainly could be considered. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, because right now, you know, I think that everything from their roof just splash pads and right. goes to grass. They do have an, uh, a drain system with uh, Leaching galleys for the roadway, right? Mark, I'm not believing it was correct. But the, the most of the roof runoff just runs onto the grass. So it conceivably could be, if it heads towards the roadway, there could be an area that you could utilize. Well, if you need a place for improvement, that might be something you could cover. Well, the goal is to install one in year six, but always have a um, a list of five properties that you can do PMPs at, and then you know you take one off the list, you add another property on. So you know there might be you know, 
looking at the stormwater committee, but you know, there might be an opportunity to add some of these other topics and, into it. And that choice was made because it would help to one accomplish one of the requirements, but it also educates the public. So you had if you did centennial. It's off the public way, so that education part you're kind of losing. So I'm not saying that you can't do it or you shouldn't do it, but the first well, the first was for the biggest bang for the buck. Right, but then going back into if you're talking like a if we keep a bag of five, yeah. The problem with the restriction just being the west side is we have a limited number to choose from. Yeah. But right now you've got a tough time getting five to begin with because of these more from this areas. Yeah, um, I think we're pretty much at the end here. We have, uh, just the last point by by the end of probably year ten, which is you know five years down the road right now, it's just you've got to have all your cash flow investigations complete. Um, so that's kind of an ongoing process to do those investigations. So it brings us to the end. So what are the current contracts for this year? You're doing stormwater mapping support. As um, so we don't know where everything is. So if you know Mark and or his guys are out there, or we're out there doing any investigations, and we identify additional stormwater features, we'll add those to uh, the GIS map. Uh, catch basins, manholes, outfalls, piping systems. Um, or, or if new infrastructure is added. Okay, add it that. says including training of interns. Are our interns or your interns? <laughs> um, if you have interns, and I think we've done this in the in the past with other communities, it, it's interns or staff. Um, we have uh, iPads and uh, capability like GPS capabilities, so that folks can go out there and make edits yeah. on you know in the field. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, could I add to that? Okay. So, as part as part of the, um, the the overall budget, there you'll see a, um, a line item for Esri renewal. Um, Esri is the mapping system we use on the tablet mm -hmm. that we take out with us on the road to do. So I can um, see something. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. When we do our inspections, our catch basin cleanings, and all of my employees have been trained. <clears throat> on the use of that tablet and how to fill out the survey one, two, three software, how to send that back to cloud or whatever, and ultimately back to my computer. So um, we've been keeping up with that training. Is that tablet self capable or does it have to come back to the Wi Fi at the senior? Uh, it has to come back to the Wi Fi. Yeah. At which point, um, I think there's yeah, a polling time. I might be. Thinking of something else, but there's a period of time where it pulls the information that I when I sync it. Stormwater committee support you. We attend, you attend six meetings, then you don't know if we're going to have a stormwater committee. Do we exist without one? Will the selectmen do it? Or God do it? Or I think Mark. that's part of the discussion yeah. that, that happens out of this. Um, I mean, that scope was written. I mean, they, they did a, they did a fabulous job. I mean, they got us in the right place with yeah. the with the educational stuff and everything they've done. It's just been terrific. I, I think. I mean, for, uh, the question is, has sorry, all, has all sorry, the heavy lifting been sorry, they got burned out. Years. <laughs> Would you say, Chair? So. These previous years have been very heavy on getting things started. Mm -hmm. So it's been heavy on reports. Mm -hmm. It's been heavy on the education. Um, but now it's implementing mm -hmm. some of those things. So like, you know, some of the next things that need to be done is we, you know, looked at, um, as Tom had mentioned, looking at um, opportunities in like subdivision and zoning to remove requirements that might cause more impervious surface in your development mm -hmm. or to make sure like there's no restrictions in incorporating low impact developments um, like having country drainage per se um, so there's some uh, recommendations that need to be looked at for implementation so that's that's something that needs to happen um, the education component needs to continue throughout 
there's a lot of just tracking of information. So, you know, a, a lot of the, the initial report development has been done and kind of the, the groundwork has been laid, mm -hmm. but now it's um, <clears throat> taking that, you know, looking at it, identifying what are you going to implement on the regulatory side, what are you going to implement on, you know, the retrofit side that we mm -hmm. talked about, and then on the, the bylaws as well and, um, you know, implementing those and, you know, watching construction sites and making sure they're using the proper erosion and sediment controls and that, you know, anyone that's put in BMPs are maintaining them so that they continue to form, you know, to function like they were designed. So, you know, that's all going to continue through these next years. And all that being said, at some point, EPA is going to issue a new permit and we don't know what those new requirements will be at that time. So, so if you don't have the stormwater committee, you know, does that fall back on the select board? Yeah, well, to, the, the way the general bylaws are written, it kind of does fall. On those right. Right. <laughs> but again, as I said, the heavy lifting, like I said, this committee did yeoman yeah. service for what was done before working with you. <laughs> Going forward, and we've been talking about this, you have a component for the planning board, like I say, subdivision control. So we have a component for the highway department, uh, municipal areas, things like that. Time bond still has a huge component as well with the permitting and the forms and stuff like that. How much more needs to be handled by a committee slash board of selectmen in the second five years as opposed to the first five years? Or we don't know. Can I can I jump in here? Okay. Doesn't it feel to you deja vu? In 2018. The select board had to scramble with a stormwater committee together mm -hmm. because the original stormwater committee did a great job in prepping the bylaw, getting it ready, got it through town meeting, and then they went away, if you will. And in the ensuing year, what happened is new regulations came up, new reporting requirements came up, mm -hmm. and you had to scramble to put the committee together. So you're at a point, it seems to me now, where some things have changed because of the work this, these people have done, which was great. But the work continues in the town. Ty and Bond, who, Emily and, and Tracy and Tom have been great, but they are not hands-on day to day. Mm -hmm. Now, you can think about paying them to do that, mm -hmm. but the committee or an individual, I believe, needs to be town-centered. Mm -hmm. You have a public participation group, uh, ongoing requirement that needs input from people that know what's going on about stormwater in order to put that public participation stuff together. And again, they, they would do the yeoman's work once it's figured out what we're going to the schools, are we going to the senior center, that kind of thing. But it, it seems to me that whether it's an individual or a committee, there needs to be a local presence. And that, um, as an example, if the selectmen want to take on that role of what the stormwater committee does, mm -hmm. then that means that you have to be involved in knowing all the new regulations as they come through, acting on them. You have to know about invoice. And quite frankly, if I were to ask you, how much money did the stormwater committee turn back to the town? for fiscal, last fiscal year, I'm sure you probably don't know, okay? Those are the things that get handled on a daily, monthly, or whatever basis that a local presence would take out of your, your hands. Um, I mean, I can't speak for the, the other members of the committee. I really wasn't burned out. I, I thought that we had reached a point where we had, once we got the revised bylaw through um, town meeting that a large amount of the work had been accomplished and that 
we were talking about going from a monthly meeting to maybe once uh, every two or three months because as Tracy pointed out, there's a lot that's going on that really doesn't require committee input on a, on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. But I felt after the town meeting that personally that the bylaw was being looked at as a cudgel and that the permitting process conceivably could be used to prevent a project or um, slow a project down, which was never the intent of us on the committee. Not one day went by. We spent how many meetings putting together particularly the residential portion of the permitting process to limit the impact on the local people um, and relied on tie and bond for the larger projects and what needed to be done under the permitting program. But I felt that the work that we had done was somehow being uh, utilized for what it wasn't set up for. And, you know, I, I just felt that we were underappreciated at that point. And, I'm, and I hear what you heard said tonight, and I appreciate that. But I think that there was a misunderstanding about what the stormwater bylaw really is in place to do. As we go forward, if you decide to hire time bond to do all of the, the, the work that the locals have been doing here, understand that under the permitting program, what will happen is that they will be charged with taking care of the permits as they come forward. That means that the residential permits will get hard looks. And not that they shouldn't, but there is a, Hobie has done a wonderful job in deciding on the, the smaller projects, what are potential problems for highway department and for the town for runoff with regard to stormwater. And has, I think, helped to move the program in a positive direction. An outside consultant is not going to utilize that same amount of discretion because they don't have it. You, they, they are going to go by what the, the exact regulations will tell them to do. And so I believe that the local people may find themselves having to do things that, yes, under the bylaw are necessary, but in a real world may not be necessary. So, Again, I'm not speaking, I'm speaking for me I'm, and where I'm coming from, but I believe that you need a local presence. I mean, uh, whether it's one person, um, certainly Mark doesn't have the time, he doesn't have the resources, and, and as time goes on, the record keeping that's going to be required under the MS4 program is going to be fairly significant. And so, between Hobie and, and Mark up to this point, great. But to add on the duties and oversight that I think locally we need, I just don't see it. I, it's either through a committee or through an individual. And the individual doesn't have to be full time. Certainly, um, maybe Bob could use a grants manager. Half part. I want to say, Gary, and I want to talk about the elephant in the room. But are we approaching the point? of a bit of a town planner, town engineer type thing. I see this kind of oversight delving into a John Pearsall type thing, and I, I see the growth, maybe not intended to, but because of the mandate put on us by the feds and the states, and you probably see it in other towns that at some point you need a department to do this stuff. Yeah, are I, we I think you are. with that a little bit? Yeah, I think you are. And I think if you, again, we. We don't compare ourselves a whole lot, but Wilbraham has a designated stormwater person. East Long Meadow has a designated stormwater person. Mm -hmm. Chicopee, Springfield, Agawam, they all have. Now, they're bigger communities, right. I get that. But the fact of the matter is that under the regulations, they don't go away mm -hmm. and they keep adding and piling on. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a reporting requirement, correct me if I'm wrong, down the road where businesses who have stormwater uh, maintenance plans are going to have to report to somebody in the town. Mm -hmm. Now, again, if tie and bond is hired, they collect the reports. But if they do, then the town has actually lost that 
intermediate feeling or understanding or knowledge of, of what actually that business is having to undergo to, to comply. Um, so what we're doing a town governance thing right now, and I wonder, Don, if that's a bit almost like a, maybe a larger charge for them to say that what's appropriate for a town government to do yeah. to provide full services. Everybody, you have experience in other communities as well. You probably see this growth in other communities that just because of regulations, et cetera, you look at what the work some of Don has done the past year, stormwater, solar, these things that keep coming to us are requiring more work on the part of town departments. As Gary said, what 20 years ago, one person could handle, it just not, doesn't exist anymore. The town bylaws went from this to 100, um, 200 pages, and probably could be more if they needed to be. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if, if, if the shared, if that's another <clears throat> yeah, shared municipal thing like we do with the well, that's what I was going to mention, uh, that this uh, shared conservation agent mm -hmm. proposal that we're working on <clears throat> uh, in our discussion this past week, uh, I brought in a, a job description that is now being advertised on the Mass Municipal Association website for a conservation agent slash stormwater manager. Mm -hmm. Both deal with water. And it seems like a natural combination, and perhaps for a smaller community that might be right, that cannot afford or doesn't need a full-time stormwater management person, this might be a solution. Anyway, I brought that to the shared group and asked them to consider it. And what may come out of that group, uh, where we have Munson, Longmeadow, and Hamden working uh, to to find a a shared conservation agent. Mm -hmm. uh, we may come up with a, a, a proposal to include stormwater management and see if we can recruit someone to do that. True. I go back to what Gary said, though. We also have to be cognizant of our small community. You know, that there are rules, there are regulations, but there's also practicality in what happens. And we'll all come across that. Just because, oh my gosh, you must have a 25 foot dam here or something like this, maybe that's not the intent of it. And we have to be relative to the homeowner something like that i think as long as that agent that is understanding of our community needs that's a way to go down the road but i still think as the growth growth happens town planner is on the horizon at some point just the growth in don has seen it in the planning board in the regulations mark has and highway etc maybe an overall department it could happen we're going to put gary in charge of organizing that Thank you, Gary. Is my wife listening? <laughs> <laughs> but but I would also support what Gary says. I mean, we can provide support, but you know, we provide some technical expertise. You know, what we've seen with other communities, and can provide that. But it's really important to have that community, like direction from the community, and that's one of the things that the stormwater community has done very well here. Well, in terms of uh, timing and stuff like that, we have year five we're in the middle of the next five year plan coming along. Bob has talked about this shared type thing, which if, I don't know what the time frame is on something like that. How do we finish up year five? What's needed from is there actions needed from the committee that it had started or it's pretty much in progress at this well, point? Probably the well. Year four end September 29th or whatever with the final report under the co your contract. And they're underway now with, with year five. But the committee, Mark, myself, Andrew, all of us, at some point reviewed invoicing mm -hmm. um, and, you know, had discussions about, um, okay, are they still on track? with what they need. And, and you guys were, I mean, no complaint. But th that kind of oversight is under year five will continue. It will continue forever. Um, the other part I think that needs to be considered is that public participation should probably be, well, two things. First, the bylaw needs to be tweaked. There are a couple areas in the bylaw with regard to timeframes and clarity of permitting that I feel 
probably should be looked at and, and up, updated. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not to say new regulations wouldn't be coming down. I, don't, mm -hmm. I haven't heard of any, but that would okay. also impact it. But um, the other part of that is that the public participation involvement on a local level, we should be notifying all the businesses here in town in the MS4 area of which most of the businesses are that and not businesses i should say property owners of business business property because they are the ones that are going to um, potentially be impacted if they want to do something on their property um, a couple of the parcels currently have stormwater management plans that people are not keeping track of whether it's a committee or the selectmen or somebody i think needs to begin to think about meeting with the businesses we tried to have last year a, a meeting with all the businesses in town to start to prep them on their obligations under stormwater um, every property owner business owner in town were notified Nobody showed. It was, all it was all resident people who had houses came came to the meeting. It was pretty well attended, but um, but no businesses. So that outreach program needs to be stronger to let them know um, one that if they're going to be doing things like paving, if they're going to be adding parking lots, if they're going to be developing of any sort, that there's a permit program and you need to apply and you need to come up with a plan to, to deal with stormwater. So this year coming year is something I think it should be done because as we go down the road, it's not going to get any less onerous in terms of reporting requirements and keeping the town in good standing with the EPA. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, so like I say, billing needs to be kept current. Mm -hmm. um, I pointed out that I think Unfortunately, they scrub the stormwater committee's account every June 30th. Um, we have run into a situation where tie and bond needed because of uh, wet weather at one point in time, or, or is it dry weather? I forget. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get the job done in the springtime. We had to carry it forward <clears throat> beyond that. <clears throat> Creatively, we tie and bond got paid, but. There, that needs to be looked at in terms of how payment and invoicing is done and, and also keeping tie and bond. Okay, what are you doing here? You know, when are we going to go? Because as you pointed out, there is less housekeeping that needs to be done here in town. But that doesn't mean that someone shouldn't be keeping an eye. And if the selectmen want to do that, that's great. Mm -hmm. I don't, I truly don't believe it's Mark's job to be doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly not Hobie's. Um, they got enough on their plates. There's a component in their departments, but it's not the whole enchilada. That's correct. Right. They, they right. support, in other words, Mark would support the, the sampling program, right. okay? <clears throat> but for him to handle the invoicing mm -hmm. is inappropriate, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and Wendell would be the enforcement officer ensuring that, you know, your best management practices, the MPs are, because he knows who's building or whoever is developing something. So he's given those permits out. He's also, I know for a fact, he's asked people to fill out their um, a stormwater um, application. Okay, it's a $25 fee, blah, blah, blah. So he's aware of doing this stuff. So these things are being done, okay, but they need to be refined. In other words, taking some of the burden off of Mark and some of the burden off of Wendell, okay? Mm -hmm and putting it in an appropriate location, um, whether that's one person, a committee, or however you feel. Shared agent or Shared, like you, however you feel, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, what, what would be the time frame of something like that? Do you have any kind of sense? The time frame for the shared uh, yeah. position? Very soon. Uh, we have what I think is the last draft okay. of the, uh, of the <laughs> MOU, and uh, How may we go through? you know, I, we had that before the selectmen uh, several weeks ago, but we were told to hold off 
until the months and selectmen approved mm -hmm. it first because there's a member of the board there who likes to revise everything and so if you adopt it and then there are other changes proposed uh, it gets awkward um, so i think it's going to be very soon and of course the problem here with all of this this is a gigantic national unfunded federal mandate um, and and so the epa is on the side of the angels doing good things and oh by the way they slip the check to the local communities and you know, i think finding some kind of revenue stream and that is not too onerous to the businesses and residents has got to be part of the picture because as been pointed out uh, costs and, and certainly regulations are going to increase uh, over time and so uh, for the municipalities it becomes a revenue issue this was a big thing we talked about and it was we didn't want to go too high on residential yeah, I know. Because who's going to say, I'm not going to pull a permit, and you deal with it after the fact, which now becomes a big mess. And you guys are the enforcers out there going after a resident, which, you know, and it's interesting, interesting to compare, interesting to compare what the EPA is doing now, issuing regulations and requiring local communities to pay, mm -hmm. with when they handed down the uh, mandate to do secondary treatment of wastewater. <laughs> Uh, many of the communities in the valley uh, built Bondi's Island. It cost $55 million. The federal government said, oh, here's $45 million. And the state said, here's $5 million. And so that cooperative financial arrangement has gone by the board uh, in both Republican and Democrat administrations. So it's kind of... <laughs> Don and uh, Craig? I don't think the selectmen should be taking on the oversight as Gary was mentioning. Um, I think it needs to be more of somebody specialized. I mean, none of us know anything about stormwater. Uh, I don't wear that hat. It seems like somebody in that role would need a steep learning curve. And, you know, the committee or a shared person would probably be the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think that just makes logical sense. I think it's similar to, as you said, it's similar to we oversee the building department but we're not handing out permits on which two right. by four to use. You know, we rely on Wendell and his, you know, people for that. Same thing with highway. We're not telling Mark what catch basin to buy, but we're in charge of the highway department. And I see that kind of being the same thing. Like if it's the town plan at some point, but right now we need, and I think Donna said before, it's the board selectman or their designated agent. Right. If that agent is the MOU with a, sure. it is, yeah, you, know, you could next for extra, basically. Correct. I would just be concerned that the shared um, person won't have that community feel is yeah. is qualified yeah. that they have the expertise because it, it's understanding the community, but on the long term, it would also be overseeing construction uh, methodology receiving paperwork on uh, stormwater pollution prevention plans kind of thing again it, it, it's fairly technical um similar to the conservation person knowing the wetland protection act rivers act and, and everything that goes along with it so the d description would be interesting to read as to what is being asked of the person who applies to see, you know, um, again, time, you, you guys can tell them, uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a very involved process, cradle to grave with stormwater, um, you know, uh, so more than an acre, you're supposed to file with the EPA, you're supposed to have a stormwater pollution prevention plan, you're so supposed to have someone who is going to oversee the, the project, but locally, you're also supposed to have someone who receives the reports and also keeps an eye on things. So going forward, yep. and you may back away if you wish, I if we're going to go down that path, is that something the committee would be willing to stay on to assist us with this type thing? I would not. Yeah, I would they, would I, it, I mean, with a, we're not saying this is a five-year commitment. Bob, Bob has a plan here going forward. You've expressed some concerns. It'd be good to make sure we're we're shaping it in the right direction. I mean, you guys have expertise in it. Don has expertise in it. It's 
we'd like to make sure it's done right. I'm only speaking for me, but I would not. I can't do it. I don't have the I don't have the time. I, I left work to come here. <laughs> and we miss you already. <laughs> um I would consider it. I would consider um, you know, helping out to get it up and running. Um you know, not a not an active participant, but somebody that could help to get something going. I kick, would, I would kick off for the next stage. Basically. Yeah, I would consider that. Yeah, yes. first one. <clears throat> Are there people out there that would do this? I mean, it's so hard to find anyone to do anything. <laughs> I hate to say it, but you know, you know, qualified people to. You know, at a reasonable rate to come in and do something. I'd be worried about you finding a qualified person to fill that slot. Yes. Well, we've been lucky to find a qualified town residents. Yeah. We've been extremely fortunate. So look at that. But there are people, so, you know, we talked about a conservation agent. Um, under the Wetlands Protection Act, stormwater is incorporated into, into the Wetlands Protection Act. So it's similar but slightly different requirements that are in the EPA permit. So there are conservation agents out there who also wear a stormwater hat. So is it possible? Yes. Um, the, the market's a bit crazy these days, though. So. I know we didn't mention this in the time piece to do it. Would it be best? You guys to go talk to the planning board and ask if one person there would volunteer a year of time to be on the committee. Another person from conservation. I mean, that's how we were. That's, all, yeah. that's how we were. I'm going to I'm gonna be truthful with you. It was very educational for me being on the planning board, okay, and being able to sit on stormwater. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say educational, um, it brought to light things that I didn't know. Um, what I feel, okay, that you would, being on stormwater, I would have incorporated in some of the bylaws, okay, that if you're going to do this, then rain gardens, you know, this, that, and the other things, certain certain things um, for future developments. So could we make stormwater committee kind of like community preservation where you have members from individual boards? It could be mandated members like the CONCOM or the rep from wherever. That's, yeah. that's up to you, Pete. Yeah, yeah. That, that would solve the problem too of staggering. <laughs> yeah, but would solve the problem too of, of coordination. I mean, yeah. uh, the building inspector is doing a great job now that is slowly that the bumps have been ironed out about mm -hmm. when projects come in. But having a conservation a planning board member, uh, mm -hmm. you know, on would make sense. Definitely. I still think there's a clerical component that needs to be explored, absolutely. You know. Absolutely. And there, there's a need for it. I mean, Mark is drowning in paperwork. Wendell's drowning in paperwork. It's just board. there. Yeah. Right. 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 That was talked about during our whole bylaw piece yeah. of just trying to pick who would be the designated agent. Mm -hmm. brought up yeah. a town engineer or whatever you want to call the person. As an alternative. Yeah. Okay. So where do we go from here? You have, you already have things you're supposed to be doing. Is there, was there a uh, financial component that didn't get taken care of? Like I said, the account got swept. Obviously it got, you know, filled again on July 1st, but are we short some money because it was supposed to be spent last year? More than likely the FY5 budget should be able to cover, but I don't, I never saw, Andrew, I never saw us from March on forward, the, the financials, but when we did the FY5 budget, um, we had added some money yeah, in we, there yeah, because, some, because the, we were worried the, it was going to roll over. Well, the town has swept us the, the year right. before. So right. there, there was, in order to pay, to, to keep uh, mm -hmm. them paid, we added money. So, and right. I, so, so we kept, we kept the, the dry or wet water budget from the year yeah, before. Yeah. We added that money plus the dry and wet water for mm -hmm. this year right. to right. hopefully it all landed in the one calendar and, year. Have you seen sampling invoicing? I'll have to look back. Yeah. I want to say I have. Yeah. Well, we did have that first invoice it, that we it, were all meeting and talked about, but right. I didn't see the. But it's all a matter of timing. Is it wet? It, it, I and I'm not sure. Sure. It's it's the wet after the yeah. first. But, but the There's an opportunity, obviously. We have a free cash situation. We right. could do it if we knew early enough. I believe we set a meeting for late October right now. So we. 
we need a number sometime in September. And it's not hard to get, just come up with a number. And if, it's, if it got swept last year, it needs to be in this fiscal year. It is what it is. Yeah, I, I just don't know. And maybe uh, if you can take a look at your invoicing and see or make sure FY4 is paid, which I believe, I don't know. Uh, like I say, it's been a while. We, we, we can double check, yeah. double check that. And then just look forward. Um, and, and so we had 47.5 appropriated for this year. Correct. Of which 40 was theirs, I believe. Which would 38, 38, 38. Okay. Right. Yeah, so we had a little bit of money in there. Right. I know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like, because there's also additional on the sampling side, because those don't go to us, those go directly. So there's an the additional, there was uh, out 5,000 for out store out fall sample. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that would be the sampling budget to the lab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the uh, paying for the. Uh, Sarah, uh, mm -hmm. the lab work. Okay. I think another piece that needs to be looked into is because this is supposed to be clear to get you ready for the project mm -hmm. next year. So you'd have to come up with whatever dollar amount or wherever you're going to get the funding to do a, like we said, the senior center or something because next year, because it has to be completed. In your, in your six. In your six. Yeah. If, if you reconstitute a group, you more than likely want to have i know you're look, trying to get volunteers for the senior center mm -hmm. expansion but somebody out of that group should be involved in this whole because the, the opportunity for stormwater and, and that kind of thing if they're aware of it they can let the architect know in advance and, and things can move along real, real course, real mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just have one last thought. Um, one topic that we did that we did discuss was um, approaching the selectmen at some point to see if um, the stormwater account, instead of being a, a line item under the selectmen, could be a standalone article for the year uh, in order to allow us to retain um, mm -hmm. Uns, you know, unspent funds, perhaps up to a certain limit, so we, we don't go crazy, but that might help with the funding of some of these upcoming projects and or um, the rest additional stormwater oh, projects that we may come up with as, as a town or I may come up with as a department that, you know, I could possibly pay for it out of. It, it's, it's a good point, but and I think we talked about this before when it started that made sense, but as it came into an annual thing, it is part of the annual budget process. If you're worried that sometimes things come along and we need to be, that can almost be like what we do with transfer station testing, where we have an amount that's going to cover anything that's coming along and whatever doesn't get required for a test rolls back in, but we have worst case scenario for uh, whatever the test numbers are needed up at the transfer station. Should we appropriate more weight based on, but I still think it's not a warrant article thing to be rolled over. It should be, okay, we're at 40 something thousand. Fine, make it 60 on an annual basis and that covers everything and the rest washes back into unexpended, but you're covering yourself for whatever. Or, it's in a bigger omnibus thing at partial. You know, then you're into it's under highway money. It becomes your responsibility. I think at this point we're in year five. It's an annual expense. Um, yeah. But the number should be more than enough to cover. And Don has talked about worst case scenario. Oh my gosh, EVA comes in with a requirement. You've got to check all these other things as well. That's another five thousand in sampling. Could happen because they do those things. But I, my personal thing is I'd like to keep it inside an annual budget type. Thing. Just a side topic. Bob just pulled up his article that the town of Palmer is looking for a conservation agent assistant stormwater coordinator. Mm -hmm. And on 30 hour per week basis. We'll double the salary. Get that person here now. <laughs> I've seen that. If I can add just one more thing. Um, I don't know the process. The, the town meeting, we updated the bylaws and um, I don't see them on the website. Okay.
Okay. You know, we're working on that now. Yes, okay. uh, Eva has is working on putting the 21 up on it now. Good enough. Yeah. Thank you. Does it cause some confusion in the past? It caused confusion down here too. Okay. Be fixed tomorrow morning, John. <laughs> the bylaws were locked. We were they running were around trying to figure out who locked them and what the code was. The laws. Okay. No, thank you. More money, more money. So his daughter was calling for money. So good. I think so. That was uh, very little. So thank you. How much more money do you want? All of it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if there are, you know, if there's additional support, we can always work on them. Okay, this is something that we're going to have to bring up, probably not at the next meeting, but I think we'll touch on it the uh, second meeting of September to really make sure Bob will have an answer on the shared thing. Really make sure we're touching over where we need to be. Hopefully, we'll have an answer from you. Are we properly funded for the year we have going ahead? And you're going to get the, the September 22nd thing to us prior to that, just uh, for the stormwater community. So oh, with the, the, um, report, the, the annual report, report. Yeah. yes. And I guess, does that go to the... Who does it go to? Yeah, who does it go to? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, there's several. There's several. Send it to Bob. Send it to Bob, and then he can distribute it to me. Yeah, I mean, John's volunteer. John, are you on the... Uh... You are, are you willing to stick on for a little bit or I'll think about it please i just want to think about whether or go for well, we're appointing everybody named john to stay on the committee <laughs> <laughs> no let's see what happens let's see what happens can I, if i could start, ask start with bob outsider, could you yeah, send me the job description mm -hmm. for that you're working on for the mou if i can sure be a pain in the butt mm -hmm. so i can read it <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Tom, bring Thank you for your patience. Got nothing to break up. Technology. We're probably turning down offers every No singing, no dance. <laughs> oh my God. All right, so. Ed. Ed, Pat. Mother, please. The front's open. No, I opened that one. No, I got the block in it. I have to block in it. I have to block in it. That's something we gotta make sure we change for next. Oh, no, he will have it over there. Yeah. Gentlemen, try to keep it so long. I'm sure that was enormously illuminating to you. It was it, actually some of it was interesting. Oh, oh wow. Oh, I mean, shoot, you guys go to a fire. You're putting on a lot of water. <laughs> Pollinator, <laughs> rain guarding it was interesting. I just wonder if it's gonna be just strictly you know, what plants were allowed in it and stuff like that. Plants only. I don't know. I know Bob. You is that part of the thing you're working on with Steve Tyler? It the, is. Uh, it is. There will be two grants? demonstration for. I think he's mentioning yeah. two things. Like he's at the pollinator. One of Mass Hall, two of Bond, and one at Memorial mm -hmm. Park. Yeah, that's okay. Three. Would that be just native plants, or? There. Yes. The answer to that is yes. And there's specific numbers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, uh, a florist uh, in Wilbraham who uh, no East Long Meadow who. Is really uh, up to date on this, and yes, and, and they are actively promoting these kinds of gardens. If you, if we had rain, it'd be great. Yeah. yeah. So, gentlemen, uh, called in to say reporting. Um, I know you shared that there's some been some changes in software or state things. Where do we stand with this at this point? Well, I, I think we need to start at the beginning. Excellent. Um, <laughs> I'll try not to make an hour long presentation, but we've already been through that. So Jane Beninkowitz, our administrative assistant, when um, I took over as uh, interim fire chief, she was doing 
um, the fire reports for the fire department. Mm -hmm. And at that time, she stressed that she was doing too much for the fire department. She didn't have a lot of time to want to keep going, mm -hmm. but she didn't have a lot of time to do it. So we, um, that was a little while into Session. the interim chief. Jane was doing fire when it came on. 6.25 p.m. Jeff and Keller facing fire fans. What's that? So press stop. National Grid, Chapin Road Electrical Service. 7 p.m. update on dog caring compliance. Unplug it. 7.5 p.m. Town Nash Fiber Optic Bandwidth. Mute. Correspondent. So anyways, we'll continue over that. Sorry. Um, so, so anyways, um, at that point, deputy brought to me um, ERS um, software, emergency reporting system, and he wanted to implement that into the fire station. Um, the cost was a lot more than firehouse, um, but he brought up positive points of being able for daily logs to keep on, and we could do our fire reporting through ERS. Um, I agreed with them. I didn't ask for more money in the budget. We we took that on on our budget, um, and it's turned out to be very beneficial to the to the um, fire department. And that was when twenty twenty one seven one twenty is when we bought it. We bought it the first of the last year. year. Okay. Um, so that being said, it still had to be built. You still have to enter everybody. You still have to build a platform. Mm -hmm. So it took a little while to do that with the help of the software company training. Um, I think we had an afternoon of training on it. Um, so we were a little lapsed on getting the reports entered into that part of it. I think what happened is there was three or four at the beginning of, of July that didn't get entered into for like, you know, we found them after what, six, seven months. I think we went back and entered them in. Um, the state knew about it. They're fine with it. They have no problems. We're in a good standing with them. Uh, I spoke to them today, asked them if there's any red flags or anything they're concerned about. They said no. Is this a software system a majority of small towns use? Or it's a I fairly believe, popular? Yes, I believe to be. There's like three or four out there that they use. Yeah, there's this only three vendors. Three vendors are approved by the state to use mm -hmm. three or four. I believe Munson uses it. I believe Wolverham uses it. I'm not sure what he's on that one. So in the beginning, so you saw my report that I sent you. It was in the capital, right? Mm -hmm. So in the beginning of January 20 to May 31st, you had 22 reports, and you sent the 22 reports to the, the right. mass mass. Uh, so we had a public request records from Donna Hatch, yeah, yeah. and we we fulfilled that. And then when I got your email, I went back to it and said that can't be right. So what happened is starting, which hindsight, maybe we shouldn't have started halfway through a calendar year, um, but it was our fiscal year that we started where we could afford software. Yeah. Um, what happened is to get the numbers or bar graph for the town report, we went back and added in all the fire reports. Yeah. They weren't the ones that were sent to the state, but we just created them on that ERS software. So we could get the general bar, bar graph or pie chart that we use for town mm -hmm. report. So it's that is balancing the annual report versus the fiscal report, basically. Right. So, so when we pulled the reports, we didn't realize that we sent the wrong reports to Donna Hatch until um, you sent your email out to us. Mm -hmm. I do have, you know, the So those people. were all corrected? No, they weren't corrected. We sent the wrong ones. Because it weren't these part are the, these were part of the original system. ones that right. should have been. Right. right, so we had to export. We tried to export. She asked for three previous years as well. So we exported those out of Firehouse, our old system, which comes becomes encrypted, where the deputy was on the phone went down to import them into our yeah. ERs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we couldn't do, for some reason, we couldn't get the six months. I actually called the state today, asked them, which they are great to deal with. I can't say enough about Daryl. Um, he was willing to give us the, it's not 22, it's 17. I'll get to that because we minus five hours. Yeah, five five hours. Hours. So it's 17 fire reports. He PDF the files over to me this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we have those 17 reports here. You can see if they're filled out accurately. Um, not the ones that were in there. Those should have never gone to down the half. Those crap, those crap things. So yeah. that's, that's 2020, right? That's 2020. So then, 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 the, so then, then in 20, so that's the January through 
June, right? And then the June, then June to December, it was pretty good. It looked like they were being filled. That must have been the new system, so they were being filled out. Yeah, and again, we're training people. We've had right. uh, new people doing these that never done them before, right. um, and and uh, we've had people leave. Um, that we're filling them because out. Because some were filled out two years after the incident. The ones that were filled out two years after the incident. Yeah, like, yeah, there was there's one that. Uh, uh, let me see what I got here. So you had one. You got one on the. Uh, March 8th, 2020, and the narrative was written on 7 20, 2022. Like that was the again, firehouse system, right? Not the ER. Again, system. It, that's in that time slot, right? Of that, of the. That's yeah. the firehouse. So, so, not went, the ER. so I'm just saying, so you, I, I'm seeing if they're corrected. So you went back and you, you, somebody filled out the one, the 3 8 20, they filled it out on 7 20, 22. So I think um, once we've learned how to export, in when we were creating the uh, request, yeah. some of them didn't populate with narratives. So the we added in, I think, the narrative on that one, and then we just didn't do that. But anymore. those aren't the ERS ones. Those are taking reports of firehouse, making the ERS that's reports from the firehouse. firehouse. Yeah, export from firehouse, right. import yeah. into yeah. ERS. How is 21 then? Really? 21 has been, well, I say it's been good. Uh, the only thing I point out, we, we, we only had 13, we only had 20. That was something we should have more, but it really was a precipitous drop in buyers. Well, I, I mean, I think, I hate, yeah. I hate to say this, but COVID had a lot to do with that. People were home, people were paying attention, they weren't mm -hmm. leaving things on, on me and their yeah. 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 homes. Or, oh, okay. That'd be interesting, yeah, that'd be interesting yeah. to know that uh, did other departments, I don't know, Pat, for instance, maybe you see that in Wolverham as well. Did you see a drop? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's that's, our, a, that's a pretty, uh, yeah, saw that one. Yeah, one fire. Thirty-one left. You know, no building. Yeah. All right. I mean, so so the the uh, so the twenty-two report. Okay. What about the five arson? You know, are those arson? Are those, so how so, is that determined? So a certain individual is filling out reports. Um, if if they put intentional, yeah, then it kicks you open to um, arson. Okay, so that's what I want to ask. So how I saw that some of them, like if they're in a barrel, it was intentional. But if but if a guy was burning with a barrel without a permit, if I was burning a pile of, of leaves or without a permit, that was unintentional. Is that just a call on the person who goes or? Well, I mean, it could be they're burning during burning season without a permit. It could be they thought there was a permit that they, they really, the homeowner was unaware of, of the rules and regulations. It was unintentional. They didn't mean to start fires. They didn't, I mean, they meant to start fires, but they didn't mean to break laws. They always said that. They would have to say that. Yeah, they didn't mean to break the law. Right? Yeah. But I mean, the barrel one, I think one in your email, there was a question if it was reported twice. Yeah. Um, that was a neighbor dispute um, between neighbors. <laughs> um, I went up there you once. <laughs> individual was um, a retired police officer. So I think our handling police officers really didn't want to get involved. Asked him nicely to stop. He went and educated himself. The neighbor called again. He said, I'm here with my hot dog. There's a cooking fire. So you're allowed well, to have a cooking burning fire. Plastic toys in the bill. Yeah. So cooking his hot dogs over. I didn't see any plastic oh. toys. That's what the neighbor claimed was in a I was going to say, hot dogs are bad enough for you there, but could be over plastic. Again, we were kind of playing, um, didn't want to get the police involved, we wanted to get the kind of help the neighbors resolve this yeah. between themselves and not escalate it any further. Um, so that's mm. that, that was two separate calls. So out. when you have, so I guess I'm trying to figure, so because one of the barrel ones were said intentional, which would that would have made them an arson. Mm -hmm. But those been corrected. Those oh, are okay. Okay. Right. So then, then uh, there's a code five sixty one. When you when you put a narrative that the person didn't have a permit, unauthorized permit, on, on bring, wouldn't that be a five sixty one instead of a one forty two? It, it could be. I mean, again, the people that were filling them out probably weren't you know learning. Yeah. Um, now we are doing a lot of unauthorized burns. Um, so, you'll, you know, when Donna has put in a second public uh, records request, I think she'll see 
that, especially when she forwards them to you, um, Don, you'll see that there'll be a lot more unauthorized burners um, in 2022. Are we, as we're coming out of COVID, I wonder if that, are you seeing, again, more activity because people think they're, at that point, they can go out and do things? I think that with, um, I think in general, people are probably reporting smoky fires. Um, we're doing a lot of community outreach. Um, mm -hmm. It's been publicized a little bit how dry it is. Mm -hmm. I think if someone sees people burning, mm -hmm. they're a little nervous and they're calling for a smoke investigation. Um, doing to we're going to Wolverham, they they do put out fire tones for smoke investigations, whereas. Mm -hmm. Um, Andy PD maybe used to go check them out by themselves, you know, or did not bother us. I don't, I don't know. Um, but if it's a smoke investigation, someone calls, we have to go out. Uh, keep in mind, even though they don't get recorded as a, as a fire, I mean, these are all calls we are going to, we are filmed out for when we file these fire reports. Yeah. Now, when you now on the the uh, Massachusetts system. When you put in a 100 series, right, that they show that as a structure fire, but there's subcategories under that, right? Like stove that was contained in the container, and they, so you say, okay, you, you got it in there. It was contained in the container, went to a house, flame, flame inside the vessel. Yeah, the vessel. It was contained. Put it out, or it was out before you got there. Who knows, right? Yeah. You put it in, put that in, and then. But when you send it to mass, they just consider it a structure fire because it was a fire inside the building. In general, yes. So about the flame that caused the fall, is that what you're saying? Yeah, so I mean, if the flame in the pan, if something's burning in the pan, there there is fire. And yeah. that's what they that's what they're looking at. Now the smoke detector was initiated. I don't know, you know, there's several causes could have happened. Um, that person could have had a medical cause that happened. They could have forgot they were cooking. They could have fell asleep. They could have went outside to get their mail. Um, there's several things could happen. The alarm is initiated by the smoke, by the fire. It's doing its job, um, so it doesn't get bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a win-win. That's the way we should be looking right. at it, not mm -hmm. a why did you file it that way? You know, it could have yeah. been a lot worse. I no, think no, that's I'm why not, they I'm counted not, that I'm way. I'm saying that that's the way they that's the way they determine it. That. Mm -hmm. It's a structure fire because the fire is inside a building, but it was contained to a vessel. Contained to a vessel. Mm -hmm. yeah. No surprise. But they don't get into that deep there. Right. Because more. if you look at the picture, if yeah. you look at this, if you look at if you look at the mass report, mm -hmm. you would say Hamden had forty four structure fire, forty four fires, and they would say nineteen structure. Well, something inside a structure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Their yeah. 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 could be cooking. Yeah. 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 could be cooking. Right. Yeah. Well. It's showing as a structure okay. fire because it's reported as a 100 and it's not proper activation of smoke detector or fire protection. And one thing I was concerned about, you did talk about obviously, you know, education and stuff like this. Where are we seeing the water sources? Something Don's mentioned in the past, you know, where the river are we? How are you guys dealing with this? Are we. Um, I have outreach to the surrounding fire chiefs, Wilhelm, Nissan Meadow, um, told them that if we have a large fire that we'd be requesting a hydrant, they give us locations, uh, street locations, of which hydrants to use. Well, we have, don't we have standing yeah. kind of permission to like cap into the end of Allen Street or something like that? Well, I mean, we still got to notify them oh, and yeah. assist us on doing, doing mm -hmm. that. Um, they'll know if our hydrants 100% or not 100%, they may All send right. us to a different one. I mean, you go over there at night and fill up without telling them, right? I hate to break a main on them. Yeah. What determines an intentional and unintentional? Well, if you click intentional, that means arson, basically. Right. So, so when you get to that subcategory, you get intentional, unintentional, act of God, under investigation, investigated unknown cause yeah. so to prove arson in any case is almost yeah. you know you need the scientific method create a hypothesis yeah, yeah. data so you know to the best of our knowledge it's the person with us you know they didn't have any deliberate intention it's it's uh well we had those five arson ones they they have been corrected two of them were corrected a while ago and three have been corrected this week the mass fire um, 
department said that they cannot change anything on that back up, unfortunately. Yeah. So if it's, it's up there, it's up there and they can't do anything about it. But in their record system, it's corrected, but it's just not posted per se. What about the false alarms? So that like, I mean, like in one place or? Um, well, I mean, the, the, the detectives were done back in um, Dell, Housing for Elderly, a couple years ago. Those haven't been too bad. Um, I, you never, I mean, I can't tell. Sometimes somebody has a problem with their alarm system. Sometimes not, they're not. I mean, but, but the biggest culprit is usually someone forgets to clean up the housing. You know, and, uh, and what about the, you know, you guys report everything. They, 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 they ask you to. I mean, they, they suggest you do all your runs and all that stuff. So how do they look? What do they look like? I mean, they in order? Oh, yeah. Um, so I asked that question, and, and, you know, we're only half to report structure fires and explosions. Yeah. Um, we're not required to report anything else, but he says some towns, when they have a fire, he has to actually call them up and request a report from them. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, once you get, once we send the uh, request over to Donna and she gives them to you, you'll see that they're in order. Yeah. You got Craig anything or with you? Know, I'll take, oh, so you got your new person on. So you have two full time and you're doing kind of like per diem with the rest of the and doing rotating them in and out for training and stuff like that, which I think is a good idea. It shows them the daily operations. So do you have plans down the road to look for a permanent third third person? Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to add before I forget as well is we do have um, the state coming out to do the MIFRS training for us the uh, beginning of October. So we get more people invested on um, doing fire reports, mm -hmm. um, more involved in, in yeah. detailing okay. those code issues. Is that just officers that do that or is that anybody that's on scene? No, we have, well, we, we throw a fire report now um, and we use that general information to on to the fire report. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we have, you know, who responds to fires. And that is um, sent over to the day supervisor. We'll do it during the day. And then a deputy will review them and send them there. Okay. One other thing, Chief, uh, Craig and I met with Andre last week. We asked him to look at your computer situation over there. It seemed like might be an opportunity for some upgrades for you as well. And perhaps if you have some needs, you want to share them with Bob, he can pass them on to uh, Barim. Barim's going to be here tomorrow. tomorrow. Is he good? Mm -hmm. yeah. So as far as that, had, you would see that on the way through. So. I know there's been a lot of talk about clerical help around town too and other departments. Are you guys in need of clerical help? Mm -hmm. um, Jane is, Jane Bethingwood is um, stepping down from the fire department this um, year. So. Yeah, we're definitely going to be looking to do clerical help, new clerical help. Um, she does a lot. I don't think it's honestly what she puts down for hours. I think she yeah. does a lot more for us. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for me to give you an hourly thing, I don't know, but we're definitely looking, um, we're definitely used to help. Yes. I know that I think it's budgeted for it might be four or five hours. Four I, hours. I do, I do confer that. Jane probably puts in more. We did talk at one time that we did have the day personnel who may not be their entire job, but is there something there they could be doing that was part of the clerical thing? I do think there's a need for expansion, my personal opinion, and it would certainly encourage you to come up with a realistic number for next year's budget cycle. But also look at the fact you do have people during the day. Is there something they could be doing? That doesn't we, we did we did take over quite a bit. I feel like we took over quite a bit that she used to. Do. Right. So um, fire reports is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, calling, um, you know, for the ladder testing, the annual ladder testing she used to take care of. Mm -hmm. She used to answer the phone for all the permits, the oil burners, um, mm -hmm. smoke detector inspections. She used to answer those. We have a phone now that Central provided to us. 
that they can either transfer calls over or give the phone number a call for those inspections. So we're picking up that slack there. Um, we're also doing, you know, the fire extinguishers and, you know, annual inspections for those. Any kind of inspection things or the day-to-day -day routine maintenance we've taken, not, I shouldn't say taken from it, but um, relieved her of, of that. So it makes it a little bit easier for her. Um, on the other hand, we seem to create more work too as well. Mm. As, as you know, as, <laughs> as you, you know, for every action is a reaction. Um, we're big into grants and a lot of times we rely on her um, to mm -hmm. scan paperwork or send stuff out. Um, we don't have that space up at our fire station. We're limited on what we can do and, and safeguard things. So a lot of times we rely on her to take care of some, you know, a lot of that paperwork and stuff. Okay. Quickly before I bring Jeff up here, equipment, uh, many, I know it's early in the calendar year, you see anything, major things coming along that maybe wasn't planned on, uh, truck issue, something like that. Well, our, I mean, our, our tanker is over 30 years old. I think everybody knows that. We're waiting to see what's going to happen with the building. I did come before the board a few months ago and asked about the refurbishing of the back of engine two, um, try to get the generator out, the hydraulic um, mm -hmm. full set of jaws out of there, uh, clean it up and and um, refurbish it to hold the, the battery powered units. Right. Um, I don't know if that's something we can talk to Bob about the special town meeting. Or... Well, this possibly means, to me, that's a critical need. If you have an amount, we can certainly talk about adding it as a warrant article for this fall. I think we did express that when you came to us before that we were very interested in helping out with that. Yeah. So if you have that number, yeah, I sent it. I sent it okay. Bob um, for that last meeting. Okay. Good. Did you ever get the radio systems upgraded to the new serial key for communicating oh, with? So them? we um, finally got Marcus to come back um, and. They did come in and reprogram the radios. However, they erased some of our scan lists um, and we're having a little problem with delays. Um, our radios won't let go sometimes, they lock. Yeah. Um, so we need to have them come back again and just having final tests done in our inside the department. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like making sure all channels operate, making sure we have fire ground in between portables. And then we'll have them come back hopefully one more time um, to repair that. We have like our headset in engine one as we're going down the road. Um, it turns on, it has an open mic until you turn the radio off and turn it back on. So it stays keyed. Hear it. Yeah. So those are little issues. Um, I don't think it's a big deal, but yeah, we have to have them back. I'm trying to get a list together, a complete list before. Mm -hmm. Is that going to require any additional funding or is that going to fall under the communications budget still? That will fall under communication budget because all those keys that were added in was all part of that. Was part of that additional mm -hmm. money of 17000 Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And they just created more problems after that. The money got well, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to say it was a hit and run, but it um, came in and it was gone pretty quick. We had a chance to like, test. But you don't want to say it. But <laughs> Right. Do you want to add anything, Debbie? I'm sorry. All right, can I bring uh, Jeff up then, please? Can I ask a couple questions? I don't know if any questions would be really relevant, Donna. I think uh, the chief and Pat have done a pretty good job here. We got a long agenda and we're running late. Pat, do you have to leave? I do. I'm sorry. You're back on duty? Yeah. Okay, but. Can we bring uh, Jeff up, please? And... So we're not knowing what my questions are. How do well, you your questions know? were about a freedom of information. You wanted questions. Don shared your concerns, and I think the chief and Pat did a good job of answering them. And I don't know what relevance you might have to the fire discussion. I, I honestly don't mind talking to Don separately after the meeting. That'd be great. Chief, I appreciate that. I don't mind at all. It's, Thank you. You know, this, just so you know, you know, our ISO rating is a nine. Every taxpayer in town is paying for a nine ISO rating. It's and been it's, a nine you know, for some years. of it's dependent on, you know, 50% is fire, 40%. How long has it been a nine rating, uh, Chief? As long as I can remember. I mean, parts of Wolverham are a nine rating that don't have hydrates. Up on the mountain. So that's a separate mountain. conversation. Craig, do you, have, uh, you want to keep going with this, or we we got to get this? No, I'm moving. Really. I got nothing. Anyhow, I appreciate the chief. I appreciate you if you can answer the questions. Please. 
This is Hatch. Ed, I'll take you up on that offer. Yeah, we'll absolutely. Yeah. Questions on one. Absolutely. Jeff, thanks for your patience. No, oh, certainly. He's never coming back. I think you're here for the dog hearing one. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> that was wow. a dog hearing, too. <laughs> we almost covered. We, had, we actually had it on the agenda tonight, and we took it off. We'll go. I was after you. I didn't follow oh, yeah. We're going to keep you. For that, <laughs> oh, okay. If you don't mind. <laughs> where are we? So um, we talked a little bit last time about where you are. Um, with the study that was completed by Mitchell Associates. I did uh, get a copy of that, we had a little transmission challenge there, but, but I did get a copy and did get a chance to look through. Um, you know, the, it is, it is a, it's a good report. There's a lot of really good information in there. There's a lot of options. And what I gleaned from our discussion last time that the real challenge was getting the community voice into the decision-making process mm -hmm. about where community goals are. So um, when I looked at looked at the report, I don't I don't particularly see a great need for me to revisit any of that. I think you've got good information. What we need to do is have conversations with the community if we can get enough engagement, mm -hmm. um, and then you know make some decisions about you know not only fire department priorities and goals but community priorities and goals. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I did prepare a few proposals I'll share with you in a moment. PowerPoint? Uh, it's actually over here. That's cool. <laughs> um, but I, what I wanted to, to, to just go over is, you know, my proposal here is based on the idea that we'll start with a um, discussion with the fire department um, to, to review priorities from a fire department standpoint. In other words, there's a lot of different categories of issues that are addressed in that program document. Some of them address specifically fire, fire safety. Some of them address apparatus storage. Some of them address uh, workspace needs. Mm -hmm. Some of them address living space needs. And so um, we've gone through a similar exercise with other departments. In fact, not too long ago, we did it over in Munson, um, where we had a great conversation with the fire department and talked about priorities. priorities. And this, you know, this is, is really comes to bear when you're making decisions about you know, what are goals and, and what are affordables. Um, and having the perspective of the, the overall fire department on that, I think is, is a good starting point. Then I go on and propose two public hearings. Um, I would work with you to figure out what the best way to promote attendance at that, because if you get five people, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be valuable to you. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can get um, a good group of people to have a real conversation, um, you know, from the fire department standpoint, you get challenged on a few things, but I think that's that's a good thing because that to that. that gives us the conversation to understand, you know, what what is behind the program programmatic requirements. Um, so what what we would do is is from that prioritization session with the fire department, we would go and pull together a lot of, of research and homework um, about those programmatic needs. We would have a conversation with the community group and then have an open discussion. We might even, uh, we've done this in the past where we, we do some interactive um, exercises to help get some good dialogue and feedback. Um, you know, sometimes having the opportunity to write something on a piece of paper and post it is, is more effective than asking somebody to speak out loud in front of a group session. Um, so we would do a couple of those. We would like to, to take the learnings from the first one and carry that into the second. And then compile that all into a report of those findings. Now, you know, this is a different kind of report than that 1,500 page book um, that's about space needs. This is, this is about community uh, feelings, about their reactions, about what they think is important for their community. Um, and then coupling that with what the fire department thinks is important. What we're really looking for is overlap. Because if the fire department thinks it's important and the community thinks it's important, that it's something we ought to seriously consider carrying forward um, into, into whatever solution um, we come up with. Um, from those two exercises, I'd like to come back and present those findings to the select board mm -hmm. um, and, and see where, where the commonalities are, see where, where the concerns are, mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then maybe we can make some decisions about um, narrowing down all of those options that the Mitchell report presented. Um, I put in there an option within my fee proposal 
that if you, if from that exercise, you want to do a conceptual design that represents all those findings and uh, put an estimate on it and, and, and carry it forward, um, that that's an option. Mm -hmm. If at the end of that exercise, you don't feel like we've reached a conclusion, then you don't have, then we just, we don't, we don't continue on. Okay, I guess you can open the folder now. So I'm gonna, <laughs> you prep this, you feel prepped on? <laughs> I used to explain 90% of what's written on the paper. So oh, yeah, but that 10% at the end we're waiting for. Yeah, that's yeah. always the good piece, isn't it? <laughs> so I think you flip back, uh, I think you flip back to page uh, three where the numbers are. Yep. Um, so that first exercise, um, you know, I've, I've Outlined a fee of $12,600 uh, for um, and then it's 15 to roll it up to three visits plus the, the select board report plus right. the homework to prep for all of those sessions. Um, you know, I'm anticipating that um, I would engage two other people in my office to assist in that Antonia uh, Cavallera, who, who is very good at these sort of community outreach exercises and, and prepares all of the graphic material that we use in the discussions and helps with the, um, the feedback exercises. And then uh, Rebecca Hopkins, uh, who's one of my project managers, um, who, who also does a very good job of engaging with the community in these conversations. Um, I tend to be a little bit uh, technical. You know, she's a little bit better communicator than I have in terms of getting people to speak. So, so I think for those two resources, we have the potential right. of getting just, feedback. Just to get a sense for those listening. So we have a Task one is Jeff illustrated was twelve thousand six hundred dollars. That's uh, the meetings with the fire department, selectmen, etc. Fifteen thousand would be task two if the board so chose to go forward with that. Um, how many hours would you guesstimate the first task is? I put in um, two and a half days for t for three people. Mm -hmm. So okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's that's uh, twenty hours. Um, at an average rate, you know, my rate's a little bit higher than Antonio's. I'm sorry. Bob, is this something that you think we have a, a, I hate to say it, the problem with grant funding is kicks the can down the road until we get that funding. You know, our source, I've done, I just don't see an appropriate line item that we take this from that's currently funded. I don't know if it's covered under ARPA, which would be a possibility because we could spend that right away. Um, otherwise, we have to kick it to the end of October on a special town meeting. Mm -hmm. and I mean, we can certainly ask we can certainly ask Bob to see if it qualifies for an ARPA thing, and then make our decision on how we wish to yeah. do it. I think that's appropriate. I mean, I don't know what your time frame is. You could say, "Gosh, if the board gave me the order right now, I still wouldn't be able to work on it until October because I'm so booked out." Well, because of the nature of this initial step, um, we could begin sooner rather than later if, if the funding was available. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I will say I have more research sources available in late October and mm -hmm. November than I do today, but you know, this kind of study, it's, it's me and, uh, and the two individuals I talked about. So, um, you know, it's something we really get going. Bob, look at this funding for our system. We can right. meeting, we can... And the board will have an opportunity to look over your yeah. proposal here as well. Of course, yes. We, again, we appreciate your patience. So, Sean, no, uh, you've given us a, a lot of good stuff to think about here. I think we need a fisher cut bait here. And the chief has said this as well. Don, we've been around, we've been talking about this for a couple of years now. We need to. I think this brings a lot of good on. things together, though, the community outreach and get yeah. a lot of different people involved, mm -hmm. you know, that may have a say. And I think it's well, a good idea. I think it's very similar to what we just heard from Stormwater. Mm -hmm. Education is key. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's not uncommon that we get a reaction. Why do you need dormant? Mm -hmm. Well, this, this gives an opportunity to have an informed discussion mm -hmm. about why a community would want to plan for dormitories in a facility. It gives the opportunity to talk about what is the implication of not doing them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what is that going to mean down the road? Are you going to have to do addition? Are you going to have to you know, do changes to the building? And, and what is the cost of those days? And, you, know, you can do that presentation in the firehouse. People can see how crowded it is. Sure, even better. absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Parking, um, just, parking would be an issue as well. Sure. Just one follow up on the, the second piece if you were to let mm -hmm. me go forward. My goal would be, you know, through those exercises, we would consolidate 
to the program requirements that, that the community stands behind mm -hmm. and then come up with a conceptual design for that and it's a little bit different than what you got in the initial study i would i would give you floor plans elevations mm -hmm. perspective and then uh, an outside estimator mm -hmm. uh, building estimate that we would build into a full project budget so you can uh, you can move forward with an understanding of what a total project mm -hmm. would cost hey do you have a copy of this he does now Yes, I do. <laughs> great, thanks. I printed out a few and I said I better print out a few more. There you go, great. Oh, again, Jeff, uh, thank you. For, thank you. Uh, this was uh, excellent. Like I said, we're happy to but I, get I, kick the can forward and so we're moving on this. I would I would uh, propose that the next time we have Jeff here, we have the first on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you coming from? Uh, I came, well, I came from Hartford. I live, I live in Hebrew. Connecticut. Oh, it's, well, we apologize for that. We just took bids on our police station in Lexington, yeah. which, you know, they like to have morning meetings, which makes it a two and a half hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a 30 minute drive, I can do it any day of the week. Great. After rush hour, too. Right. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Well, we yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, National Grid, do we actually have a report on this or? Uh, no, we do not. Uh, the response I got from the gentleman at National Grid was, mm -hmm. well, we don't have the seven houses in queue. Uh, make sure that, you know, they contact us at such and such. It would not come to a public. Okay. I did speak to Madison Pixley today and mentioned to her our concern about power dropage on the road, if you will, both drop and so. When they had a chance to meet with, is it Al Joyce, I think, the bedrock guy? Mm -hmm. Make sure that was part of their consideration with him that it's up to him as the developer to make sure the services are adequate on the road for all residents, not just where it ends at his house, but how it impacts people going forward. That's so, still a down the road type of thing, then. I mean, it is, but I mean, didn't we see? I thought we saw some progress, some answer from the guy. He changed out a transformer. They, well, they changed out a transformer that feeds. 375 and 379 roughly mm -hmm. in there mm -hmm. on Chapin. But even after the transformer, they were still experiencing voltage drops and they had the power check at their house and they were under 220. Yeah, the line technician came out and said, yep, you're under 220, is what he told me. So. Now that's at the house, they can't tell if it's a drop from the street though, I wonder? Well, it's at, mm -hmm. that comes into the house to feed service right, feed, so it's, it's yeah. off the line somewhere. Right. Right. So again, go back to, is it Pam Hill you're talking to or somebody? No, so, you know, when Mandy comes in and does yeah. her stuff, yeah. it's, it's something that, that she works with. Her. So if you, Bob and Craig could work on this and come up with something for next time so these people can take care of it. Yeah, they, they said they would meet privately though, right? They said they wouldn't meet in public, but they would be more than happy well, to talk. I don't know, did you end up reaching out? I did not, no. Okay. Okay, well, well if they come to the town the hall, and perhaps Craig could sit in, they'll be yep. moving forward. Great. Uh, <clears throat> the dog hearing, uh, we did, uh, Bob did hear from Shelly today, and Bob, want to get a quick recap? <clears throat> yes, we've had uh, two separate hearings with dog owners <clears throat> on complaints that their dogs have been off their property and causing disturbances uh, uh, on the part of neighbors. Uh, the solution that the selectmen came up with was to uh, mm -hmm for both dog owners to ensure that they had good fences. Uh, one dog owner has done some repairs. Um, we did see a picture of the fencing that Shelly had sent along. Mm -hmm. It's it's a bit jerry-rigged, but Shelly said that she thinks uh, nice. it will keep the dogs on the property. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, owner um, is going to construct a fence but there's some discussion now involving the neighbor next door as to where the property line is. And they did not want to build a fence only to find that the fence was built on the neighbor's property. So that is being worked out and uh, there will be a fence, which I think will take care of the problem for the second dog owner. So that's where we are at this point. All right, but the key thing is there have been no further incidents. And there have been no right. that's, that's further our jurisdiction incidents, right according to Shelley, yeah. involving either dog owner. Mm -hmm. 
And I did ask her for updates on prior ones and uh, the Rock and Dundee one had been resolved. Okay, and then uh, nothing further, Main Street, uh, some of the other ones as well. Maybe drive. Mm -hmm. Maybe drive the one car, yeah. yeah. So town house fiber, Greg. Um, so I guess we're having issues with the phones still. Yes. And from what they're saying is we're dropping bandwidth. So I had um, with city look through our, our stats and they're saying we're showing some peaks where we're, meet, we're reaching our limit when both transmit and receive on the data. And it says it looks like we're reaching those limits around last December, but are more consistently reaching it now. So he recommended, you know, based on their networking engineers that we increase our bandwidth from 50 megabits a second to 150 megabits a second. 50 to 150? That's what they, did. they said they would comfortably like to see us at that range for what we're using. We can reassess that. Correct. We have, now we yeah, have, we have to put, put an article that, on for to, uh, the small town meeting. We have to put an article. We can, we we can, can wait until spring. Right, we can afford and start a budget now, but we yeah. run out. Right. So we have a current contract with them at 50. At 50. Yeah. Right. We can amend that. Would we have the opportunity if we saw that, okay, we're peaking at 80, we can live back to 100, we could go back and revise it later if we so chose? So here, here's the deal. There's that only their next level? No, there, there was a 100 megabit level, but he's giving us the 150 megabits at the lower level price. Will he give it to us at the 50 price? I don't know. He's, he's a, these are what I can do for you. We can work for some municipal to municipal. I can offer you the rates. This is Whip City. Whip City. The people were giving millions of dollars to uh, put our fiber system in. Yeah. So they offered us a, a reduced rate already. I wonder if the art of the deal. Did he read the book? <laughs> <laughs> Still cheaper than Comcast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Comcast. Who was the so author? the number is what? Going from 385 to 550. A month. A month. And tripling our bandwidth, basically. It's tripling our bandwidth. It's upload or download? That would be both fiber and the merit matched speeds up or down. Okay. So, as I said, we can afford it and then yeah. expand that budget in the fall if we need to as well. Let me just think if we end up doing municipal fiber in town, mm -hmm. we're going to cut that bill. So, so I'd like a motion to offer the uh, town administrator to amend the contract to uh, change the monthly amount. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Make it so bad. We have some one day permits for the senior center. And I don't see why we have any question about that. On Saturday, September 29th, they have a outreach coordinator network event from four to six. On Saturday, October 29th. They have a uh, 12 to four, the art show also on Sunday. October 30th, 12 to 4. How do we feel about these one day permits? I move that we accept the one day permits, the approval one day permits. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. We already signed. All right. We have a request from the BFW to have their annual turkey shoot. Are we, the dates they mentioned here, are the, including the Christmas holiday one, did they have that last year as well? I believe they yeah, did. Yeah, he did. I think so. They did too. Yeah. Yeah. He came in and he right. was school. And I have not heard of any complaints. Uh, has either the board no. members heard anything? No. And if you would just verify that with Scott, but I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Okay. But having said that, if the town, if the police chief has heard no issues, I would entertain a motion to approve their request. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Steak roast. We have an invitation from the steak roast. roast. Back to the turkey. Yeah. That's a steak roast. Not I don't want to know. We're doing turkeys now. I just want to point out that they don't shoot real turkeys. So shoot targets. Targets. And with a turkey. Yeah. Thank you, Don. If you mean. No turkeys were killed. <laughs> no turkeys were killed in this promotion. Uh, we have an invitation from the, uh, for the annual steak roast. Actually, a little late this year, September 10th. Who's steak so. roast? The fire department. Oh, okay. yeah. We had that last year. We were away last year. Yeah. yeah. When no, is it? September, September 10th. 6 o'clock. I assume that's our, it must be a Saturday after Labor Day. Is this yeah. bringing your own utensils? Is this bringing your own utensils? Same as all of them. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, Don brought up a point about the meeting on the 6th that since the auditorium will be tied up with the election, uh, we'll have our meeting in our office. If I think the three of us work on the agenda properly, we should be able to work it out with the proper people inside and everybody else be on Zoom. Do you think that monitor will be in by then or it's in? Uh, yes. Yes. Up and running by then. And we'll have that great bandwidth then too. Should. It's just a flip a switch. Flip a switch. I like that. So you're comfortable with having it at the office? Sure. Okay. Good. And who knows? Maybe that'll be. Let's get a good microphone system. I have to say, and I mentioned before, I watched some meetings, months and whatever, and their mics are fantastic at their meetings. They have those, you know, the. Yeah, so much better than you do this. You want, we can talk about this now if you since you brought it up, or we can put it on another agenda. Yeah, thing. Just come back with a, a proposal or something. Well, there's it. a whole other Zoom system I was researching. Is that what it is? Yeah, there's Zoom conference rooms now, which they're using differently. You can host it, and they have different lights and everything. It's a whole whole automated system. Can you come up with a cost? I can look into it. I just started researching it. Okay. I mean, that's the one thing. I watch our tapes, and it's, yeah, just, it, it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. So the school committee, they can work on this yeah, too yeah, yeah. as well. But I will say it's the ones that have the municipal cable, like Munson, Wolverham, their audio is always better. No, because they've been doing it longer or because maybe the nature of the it's impact we need and stuff. Yeah. When you have Sennheiser microphones as opposed no, to sure, these nice Amazon thing. basics. Yeah, yeah. So anything else? To, uh, we have correspondence. Uh, so sure. Whatever Bob, do you have anything to talk about? Yes, I do. Okay. I need a couple of decisions. Uh, we already talked about the shared uh, conservation agent. Uh, just an update on the water main break at the townhouse mm -hmm. last Saturday, Saturday before last. Um, a neighbor uh, whose water apparently uh, wasn't well it dried up. Mm -hmm. um, contacted uh, Jane Benekowitz and she came down and discovered that uh, a piece was uh, malfunctioning mm -hmm. in the hookup uh, for town water. And they called in uh, Halleck and they sent their plumber in and it was fixed. Um, you know, out of this, we definitely respond to the yes. fire department, great response on their part, the yeah. water commission as well. That's right, and the fire department came and know. pumped, right. pumped the uh, uh, basement. Four, four feet of water. Yeah. yeah. Save uh, it for the, uh, put it in the tanker right away, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now that uh, I think we've learned a lesson here, we're going to hook up the alarm system okay. right to the water supply as well. So is that we'll going, least, to, is that going to the dispatch or where does that go? Is that, one? Does that go to the police station? Does it go to the dispatch center? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Police station or the phone line. Well, it's going to go to dispatch. Okay. Uh, what I want to know is now that we are at a level three drought, mm -hmm. um, a severe drought in the red zone, mm -hmm. um, we put some instructions on the town website for residents uh, looking to cooperate and conserve water. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want, uh, we <laughs> asked the chief of police this morning to use that digital radar device on the trailer, but that's as usual not working. And uh, we're going to pursue the one we got for free from the uh, yes. gambling money. Yes, great deal. So, no. um, so uh, at what point do we do we try and contact all the residents with a robocall? Well, you can, but again, you can't mandate it. We're asking for their support yeah. for these dry. Just times. ask them to visit the I website think, and take yeah. a look at. It. Don the mentioned the only them. one is really under restriction is the golf course because yeah. they're mandated. Yeah. And they're also monitored for the things, so they are cooperative. So it's well. I mean, fine. Draft something up. You want me to do it? You know, sure. drought info call, not, yeah. a, not a mandate. Please be mindful of water. Yeah, I mean, this is not. This not that won't have any mandate yeah. overtones no. to it. Just to, yeah, here's some information for you. Sure. We all use the same aquifer. Yeah. Those who have well water. Dog issues. Um, yeah. We are now informed that we will be getting $631.31 in the opioid settlement. Uh, the state is encouraging the towns to get together on this, and, and the money has to be earmarked for drug abuse issues. And so they're encouraging, encouraging towns to get together on this and come up with a program for several communities at once. 
Mm. Um, now, Chief of Police uh, has asked uh, if the Board of Selectmen will uh, approve of a warrant article which would permit an officer who is reaching the age of 65 to continue. Well, we did this a year or so ago. We right? did this for a firefighter. Right. right. It's the same thing. Mm. It'd be the same thing. I mean, you're just approving putting it on the warrant, and I think the chief would then have to come in and explain to the town meeting. And I think we're pretty uh, consistent with allowing department heads to put warrant articles together. And, yeah. so. Okay. okay. Um, well, we are working with the town moderator, former government study committee, mm -hmm. and we're still trying to um, urge, cajole maybe, mm -hmm. uh, all boards and committees to get to have one member at least with an account on the town website for mm -hmm. their particular department or board or commission where they can post agendas and post minutes, mm -hmm. either written minutes or uh, recorded minutes mm -hmm. using Zoom. That's it. Okay. Anything else from uh, Selectman reports? I have nothing. No. Motion to adjourn. Second. No report? No. You? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Fine. Okay. Center time. Yeah. Thank you, Ron.